Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and I'm here to tell you about no fewer than 10 astonishing improvements we have made to project setup in Dorico 4. First off the bat is a redesigned Dorico hub. The first tab of the hub is a list of your recently opened Dorico projects and MIDI and music XML files. Double click to open one or browse your system for another file. The second tab is where you create new projects. All of the usual templates are here, but now you can set various information before creating the project. Give it a title and composer, specify a page size, orientation, and rastral size. That's the actual size of the music. And if you know your project won't be using multiple flows, keep this option unchecked and you won't see flow headings. Set a music font and a default text font, and set time and key signatures and an initial number of bars. It goes a long way to making starting projects quicker and easier. The Learn tab has some interactive tutorial projects that walk you through how to get started in Dorico. Quick links to our most recent videos and blog articles and buttons to switch to the Dorico online forum and manual. That's the new hub, and all of that counts as just one of our 10 improvements. Next up is user templates. Set up a project with the players and instruments that you want, add flows, set project info and page setup information, such as page size, orientation, and rastral size. Go to File, Save as Project Template. Give your template a name and choose a category, and you can define your own. There are options to retain the flows and preserve project info. Now in the hub, your template will be shown in your defined category. You can still set certain options such as time and key signatures when you create your new project. For improvement number three, now when you open a second or subsequent project, Dorico asks if you would like to activate playback. By not activating playback, you save time and resources spent on loading any VST instruments and effects. This also makes switching between open projects much quicker. You can activate or deactivate playback for any project by pressing the power button on the toolbar. Number four sees an improved ensemble picker. Simply start typing the instruments you would like to create using long or short instrument names. Once the instrument is recognized, it will show in the list below. Type a comma before starting your next instrument. Specify the number of each instrument you would like. At any point, you can hit tab to bank all instruments so far and then continue typing. When you've built your ensemble, press add to add the instruments to the project. The Choose tab is the more familiar ensemble picker from previous versions, and you can also use the names of these ensembles in the Builder. For example, I can search for Wind, Brass, and String Ensembles. If you have an ensemble that you are likely to want to reuse, you can save it. Give it a name and a category, again, you can define your own, and then it will appear in the Choose tab and as a preset when building. Next, we have automatic score ordering. A long press button on the player's action bar lets you set automatic sorting of players. It's the default for new projects. Currently offering orchestral score ordering, but with more ensemble types planned for the future, with this enabled, any new instruments will be added at their usual position in the score order. Sort an unordered players list with a regular press of the button. And while we're talking about ordering lists, it's also now possible to sort layouts either by their layout number or by following the instrument score order. Set it by long pressing the sorts layout button in the action bar. Okay, I'd better get a shifty on. I've been a while already and I'm only halfway through. Number six, it's now possible to right click a player and define it as a soloist. The player is then moved to the traditional position in the score order prepended with the word solo and is not numbered or bracketed with similar instruments. You can define more than one soloist. There's a layout option to show system attached items above 
the soloist. To avoid confusion with soloists, where we used to have solo players and section players in Dorico, we now have single players and section players. As it can be useful to start a composition by sketching using more general staves, perhaps by instrument family, for our seventh improvement we now offer a number of sketch instruments in Dorico. Generic treble, bass and grand staves, as well as brass, string and percussion grand staves. Back over to the other side of setup mode for number eight. Sometimes it would be really useful to be able to duplicate a layout. Well, what do you know? Now you can. For our ninth improvement, we're talking about language settings for instrument names. You can set the default language for instrument names in preferences on the general page, but there's also an engraving option for updating them in the current project. So let's hit J for the jump bar and start to type language. There it is. Hit return to open those options. This first option allows you to set the instrument language name on the fly. Really useful to be able to do this so quickly with just one option here. And then, of course, there are all sorts of options to tailor instrument names just as you need them. As we reach number 10, our final improvement is actually a whole group of new features, again, about staff labels. To start with, and this is something we've always wanted to do, placing players in a group will, by default, show a bracketed group label in the score. For example, I can place these choir players in a group, name it as such, and Dorico adds a player group label automatically to the score. This can be really useful, say, when there are multiple groups of similar instruments or singers. Dorico will display the group's short name when there is not sufficient space to show the full name. Right-click the group header to set both long and short names. There's a paragraph style for player group labels and engraving options to control the appearance of the brackets. If you don't want to see player group labels, you can switch them off in layout options. It's now easy to use player names as staff labels by way of a layout option. These can be useful in various situations such as named characters or percussionists holding multiple instruments where you might prefer to label them as percussion one percussion 2, and so on. There are some great new layout options for controlling staff labels for transposing instruments. You can now show the transposition pitch on a separate line, in parentheses, and after the instrument number. You can now set an engraving option to group identical section player instrument labels between their staves. And finally, as is the convention for some band ensembles, when grouping single player staff labels, it is possible to display the name aligned with the top instrument rather than centrally. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up below to let me know and subscribe to the Dorico channel right now to see much more like this. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.